Hello everyone and a long overdue welcome back to Race Room. Unfortunately I've had very few chances to get out on the rig in the past couple of weeks so this is my first ranked race in Race Room for a fortnight. It's a 15 minute dash around Brands Hatch Indy in the GT4s and although there's only a field of 14 drivers we've qualified really well. Put it fifth on the grid with a qualifying time of 49.4. Now there are some seriously quick drivers in this race so it's really encouraging that I've qualified among them and with the top eight separated by less than a second it's all set to be a frantic and fast 15 minutes. I've been driving the Lotus in recent GT4 races and I'm going to stick with the same car for today. It's not the easiest to get around some of these corners at Brands Hatch but we're going to give it our best shot so let's get over to the grid and see how we get on. Well, we didn't start too badly, but it looks like Timo Plume in Sips has got away a little bit faster. He's pulled alongside already on the inside, so we're not going to be able to get onto that racing line. We're going to have to stay wide. And yes, we are going to lose a position to Plume's Porsche. Well, that's okay. I'm happy to be sitting in Sips. And what I've got to concentrate on now is not to give away any more positions. In recent rank races, I've been beaten up on the first lap or two and gone back down the field. So we need just to be a little bit more streetwise on the these first couple of laps. We said at the start of the race that the top eight were separated by less than a second so we know it's not going to be easy to make a break for it here but if we can open up a little bit of a gap back to Jason Williams in seventh that will make me feel a whole lot more comfortable. Williams is right behind me as we come out through clearways for the first time. We must have found a slightly faster exit because we have opened up a couple of tenths on Williams as we charge down the start and finish straight. So we're starting lap two in sixth position and in hot pursuit of Timo Plume in fifth. Oh, we just ran it a little bit wide there out of Paddock Hill Bend and that curb didn't feel pleasant at all as Timo Plume has a look up the inside of Phil Lawson into Druids. He hasn't got the line though coming down to Graham Hill Bend. Lawson's going to defend and hold on to fourth. There's nothing to separate these two cars in front and that's going to work in my favour. It's going to help me stick with them and hopefully pick up the pieces if anything goes wrong. But look at the gap behind now. We've lost Williams. I think we lost him in Paddock Hill Bend actually. But he's right down the order and as a result we've got more than a second to the driver in seventh, Mark Taylor. And yeah, Williams is all the way down to 12th, so whatever mistake he made, it was a costly one. As we're about to start lap three and we're still within striking distance of Plume here. We just need to stay as close as we can to the back of that Porsche. I oh know it's not going to be easy because every one of these five drivers in front of me are incredibly fast. In qualifying we saw Webb and Grunwald lap in the 48s. So it's no surprise to see them one and two at the moment and it does look like they're beginning to make a little bit of a breakaway and possibly pulling Tobias Bream in third along too. But my immediate focus has got to be on the two cars right in front of me. That battle between Lawson and Plume for fourth. I really need to try and stick with them, but we're just beginning to see them creep away. For the first time in the race, that gap to Plume has opened up to one second now. So I'm really going to have to up the pace if I'm going to stick with them. Taylor is 1.3 seconds back now, so that gap behind is growing. That's encouraging. Oh, and we're out a little bit wide onto the curb again and that just threw the car right off into the barrier. We've crashed out big time. Oh, how frustrating can you get? There was no way to rejoin safely either. We had to wait until all the cars have come by. So we've gone down to 10th position and more worryingly now look at the damage we've picked up from that huge hit. Well, let's check out the replay of that crash. And the warning signs were there, actually, at the start of lap two. I ran out wide onto that curb then, and it really unsettled the car. But I didn't learn from that. And then, yeah, look how the car just let go. That TV cam doesn't give us the best view, actually. So maybe this angle will give us a better idea of what happened. We're just about to get on the gas. And, yeah, as soon as we do, we just hear a bump in that curb. And there's no saving it. Let's ride on board and see if we can hear the car bottom out. Yeah, as soon as we hit that bump on the curb, we were just a passenger there. There was nothing we could do about it to save that one. And actually looking at how hard we hit that wall, we can be a bit fortunate that we're even still in the race because I'm amazed that this Lotus is even drivable. 
Yeah, I'm really struggling with the handling now. Look how this car is weaving. It just doesn't want to go in a straight line. We've still got more than 11 minutes of this race left. I'm wondering if I should just go into the pits and get these repairs fixed. But there is a yellow flag out, so let's stick with it. Let's see what's happened up ahead. There's a cloud of dust and a car parked up on the exit of clearways there. And that was Alexander Grunwald. He was in second place and battling for the lead. So something big has gone down there. And another yellow flag out. So have we lost another one of the front runners? Yes, we have. On the infield there, we saw Stefan Dumas' Audi. And we've also closed right in on William Butler. So in the space of a couple of corners, we've gained two positions back and we might get another one here. So I think we need to abandon all plans of going into the pits for repairs. Instead, we've got to concentrate on clawing back as many positions as possible. The Lotus is damaged, but it's still drivable. Just... And it looks like the Audi in front might not be because Butler was struggling to keep it in a straight line there. He left a gap up the inside and we've managed to dive through up to seventh. Oh, I just wonder if Butler was involved in that instant with Grunwald and picked up some damage because he certainly seemed to be struggling. We'll go back and look at the replay shortly, but not quite yet because there's another yellow flag out. Who have we lost this time? It's Bjorn Minyong, who was the sixth place driver, so we have gained another position. We're back to sixth. Incredible, just two laps after spectacularly crashing out of sixth place. We find ourselves back there. Well, it certainly looked like a big incident earlier in the race, so let's check out the replay and find out exactly what went down. We're watching the battle for the lead. Matt Webb out in front and Alexander Grunwald right behind him. Now, we're going to see one car lose it a bit further back, but keep your eye on Grunwald in second. He's going to lose the rear coming out of clearways and slam backwards into that wall. But here's where the situation goes downhill. Grunwald is going to try and rejoin right onto the racing line and he gets crunched. And before his cars even stop moving, he gets hit again, even harder. Yeah, it was a really poor rejoin, this from Grunwald. This fast exit at Clearways is one part of the Brands Hatch track where you really don't want to be rejoining the racing line in first gear. But watch Grunwald here. His first thought is to get back on the track as quickly as possible and not what traffic is coming. And he gets hit really hard, not once but twice. Now we're riding on board with Stefan Dumas. He was the first car to hit Grunwald and you can see how he's got no time to react. He's going flat out onto the start and finish straight and all of a sudden Grunwald appears in front of him. And that huge impact has no doubt damaged the Audi of Dumas because as he approaches Paddock Hill Bend, he's got no control over the car. The rear steps out and he slides onto the infield. That's what gave us another position back and put us up to eighth. Now, William Butler was the other driver to hit Grunwald and he equally had no time to react. And Grunwald really should be slamming on the brakes there to try and stop his car running across the track. He didn't. And although Butler tried to get around, he had no chance. Picking up some serious damage which left him powerless to stop me making a move up the inside to take seventh place. And incredibly, there was even more still to come. This is Bjorn Min Young getting it all wrong, going into Paddock Hill Bend, just carrying way too much speed, losing the rear and ending up in the gravel trap. He tries to rejoin. I must admit, I panicked a little bit there when I saw him coming towards the track, but he did everything right, everything that Grunwald didn't do earlier. He waits until the traffic clears and then rejoins safely. Back to the live action and I'm still worrying about whether my damage is going to hinder my attempts to stay in sixth place. I've got Butler and Min Young behind me but luckily for me these two guys are battling really closely and it's helping me just to creep away a little bit. You can see in the TV cam on the top right corner they're now side by side coming through clearways. That's Min Young on the inside trying to make a move past Butler. It looks like he's got it. Yes he has done as they cross the start finish line. But then Butler's just going to get a bit too close to Min Young. He clips the rear end of that Audi. And Butler goes spinning out and then right back across Paddock Hill Bend. It's a miracle. He didn't take that other car with him there. So that incident behind me gave me a little bit of breathing room. As you can see from the leaderboard now, Min Young is more than two seconds behind. So we're fast forwarding a couple of laps. 
Now I've managed to maintain that advantage. We're 2.2 seconds clear of Min Young in seventh still. And it's Min Young who's my only real threat at the moment. So I'm keeping one eye on my rear view mirror. But then as I call the TV cam up again, we can see Min Young disappear into pit lane. Now I'm guessing that he had a drive through penalty that he needed to take because I don't think he was carrying any damage. But that gave me some real breathing room in sixth place. You can see from the leaderboard that I'm now six and a half seconds clear of Dumas in seventh place. So for the first time since that big crash earlier in the race, I'm feeling confident again that I might be able to get a top six finish. And that's exactly what happened. For the rest of the race, I was unchallenged. I had a fairly quiet time running around in six, which was just what I needed, really, considering the damage that I was carrying. You can see Dumas was behind in seventh, but that gap only increased. He's 10 seconds back down the road now as we cross the finish line to see the checkered flag and take a welcome sixth position. So yeah, given that spectacular crash in the early going, I feel quite fortunate to finish the race at all, never mind in the top six. Well, we can see from the classified results there that my fastest lap in the race was a 49.7. So a little bit slower than qualifying and I suspect I set that time on one of the laps before my crash. The top five, meanwhile, all set fastest laps in the low 49s. But I do feel like I had the pace to match them had I not had that crash and picked up that damage. But nevertheless, it's great to be back racing in Race Room and I hope you guys enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed driving it. Cheers for now.